Look at this! I actually successfully managed to buy a thing on launch day. Something which, honestly, I wasn't really expecting to happen this year. Now, the stock was still pretty thin on the ground, uh, especially with the higher end SKUs, but still, I got a 5600X, and now let's do a mini ITX build with it. I hope you enjoyed watching me build that system as much as I enjoyed building it. I've built in the H1 before, but I forgot how idiot proof of a building experience it is. It's funny that I say that, considering the first time I built in it, I screwed it up royally, but you know, that's a topic for a different video. Considering the fact that it has the power supply pre-installed with the AIO pre-installed and all of the cables for it pre-cable managed, I honestly think that for a first time PC builder, it would be easier to build in this than like a full sized ATX system. It's very easy to build in. I only had one relatively big snag while building the system, but I'll, I'll get into that just now. I just want to finish talking about the H1 first. Um, the only issue I have with this case is this glass front panel. I don't think the glossy reflective black glass matches the like matte aesthetic of the rest of the case. I think the panel on the other side, that matte gray mesh panel looks way better. And because of how the IO is oriented on this case, you kind of have to have the glass at the front. And you know, it's a glass panel so you can see into the case, which is cool, but it's the inside of a cramped ITX system. Like it doesn't look that great. It's kind of like putting a glass bonnet on like a Toyota Corolla. It's pretty cool that you get to see the engine, but it's a Corolla engine, like why would you want to see that? So I think the system would have looked a lot better if they just had two of those matte gray ventilated panels on either side. And not only do I think it'll look better, but it'll also obviously have better thermal performance because the top of the GPU is right here and then it exhausts a lot of heat just into the glass. But anyway, with that, let me just tell you about the snag that I ran into while building the system. And then we can talk about that Ryzen 5 5600 and the RTX 3070 and the gaming performance and thermals and stuff like that. Very exciting stuff. But while building the system, this Samsung 960 Evo NVMe drive it kind of died on me. I, I had Windows pre-installed on it and I could boot into it easily, although I was having weird stability issues and like driver install issues and stuff like that. So I thought, let me just reinstall Windows. And during the reinstallation process, the Windows install failed. And then after that, like I just couldn't find this drive. I plugged it into a bunch of other systems. They wouldn't even read it in the BIOS of the motherboard. Disk manager didn't read it. I couldn't reformat it or anything. 
I, I, I've not been able to fix this drive, so I actually had to replace it with a different SSD in the system. Um, yeah, that was pretty weird. I've been using it for about three years, and yeah, it, it, that Windows install just kind of killed it. So I'll see if I can fix it at some point, but yeah, it's not in the system anymore. Okay, so with that, let's have a look at the gaming benchmarks that we got with this very exciting hardware combination that I think, I think is going to be very popular. Gaming on this system with its Ryzen 5 5600X and the RTX 3070 in it is an amazing experience. Battlefield 5 at 1440p high settings uh, on this multiplayer match was running so well, so smooth, very few stutters. It is an amazing experience. Next up, Escape from Tarkov also runs so well with this configuration at high settings at 1440p. You're mostly sitting at about 100 frames per second, which is very good for Escape from Tarkov. Uh, the frame pacing is also good. There was the occasional stutter, but that's because it's Escape from Tarkov. It always stutters. But yeah, the, the gaming results were, were really awesome here. Assassin's Creed Odyssey at very high settings at 1440p, which is a, a pretty demanding use case, was very smooth, very playable, as you can see here. There's some frame dips and stuff when you get to like a bigger view, but still, it, it's an amazing experience considering the graphical settings that we're gaming with here. This is a real little beast. When it comes to the thermals, the CPU thermals are really good on this H1 because of that big 140 millimeter AIO. Like it's cool as a cucumber. When it comes to GPU thermals, it's not looking as good. We're still sitting at 72 degrees Celsius after over an hour of playing Battlefield 5, which is not bad. I mean, it's not very noisy. You don't have a high fan speed here, but it is 10 degrees hotter than it was in like an open air case, airflow case. So I think, again, NZXT, if you bring out just like a drop in mesh side panel replacement for this case, I think you would get better thermals for the GPU. As far as the Ryzen 5 5600X goes, this is straight out of the box performance. So I'm just letting it do its own thing here. And as you can see, while gaming, various cores boost above 4.6 gigahertz. Although interestingly, while playing Escape from Tarkov, most of the cores were running at above 4.6 gigahertz for the majority of the playtime. Let's just briefly talk more specifically about the 5600X because it is a very impressive CPU. If you look at the R20 benchmarks, the multi-threaded result is 4,107, which is amazing for a six core 12 thread CPU. But what's even more impressive in my opinion is the single core result, which makes a 7700K look like a Ryzen 7 1700X. Honestly, I don't have a whole lot more to say about this 5700X and RTX 3070 console. Combination. It offers an amazing gaming experience and once the stocks stabilize and you can actually reliably get your hands on a 3070 and a 5700X, anybody who buys this combination will be very happy with it. Although, Big Navi is coming out soon, and I think that's going to be an even better combination. Pairing this 5600X with an RX 6800 is going to be awesome, especially considering that they have all those caching technologies where the two can join it and work together to just produce the ultimate gaming experience. I can't wait to see that. I'm going to try my best to get my hands on an RX 6800 on launch day, and then when I do, I'll compare these configurations configurations. So if you're interested in seeing that, subscribe to the channel for that and more videos like that. If you want to just come hang out on Twitch, I have that linked in the description below. And until the next video, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.